we spend today learning about continuous data. And continuous data is data that is connected. It is data that is connected. And so, like, we talked about um, how a number of children would be, a quantity of children would be discrete. Well, this time, some examples of continuous would be things like temperature. Because the temperature steadily but slowly increases or decreases, it doesn't just jump from 85 degrees to 86 degrees. It gradually goes there. And so those half numbers, those numbers in the middle, in between 85 and 86, they count. So when we're finding our, for continuous functions, when we're finding our domain and range, remember our domain is our x's, our range is our y's, which we have that written down here at the bottom. So here's our range, our domain. Um, we're going to see a lot of circles. We're going to see open and closed circles on our graphs for these continuous functions. So when we see an open circle, that tells us our inequality symbol is either going to be a less than or a greater than. And when we see a closed circle, our inequality symbol is going to be a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So if it's solid, then there's a line there, a completely filled in line. And when we read our domain and our range, the way we're going to read them is our domain is going to go from left to right, and our range is going to go from bottom to top. And we can use the phrase Delore the robot to help us remember that. Delore stands for our domain goes from left to right, and our robot stands for our range, which goes from bottom to top. So if I want to find the domain of this graph, remember my domain is going to be written like this. We may put equal two signs here, we're not sure. I'm going to go ahead and erase those for now. And we read it from left to right. So we're looking for the left side of the graph, which is going to be here. That's the furthest left point. And the right side of the graph, which is here, that's the furthest point to the right. Well, those points are at negative 6 and positive 6. So my domain is going to go from negative 6 to positive 6. So at negative 6, there is an open circle here, so that tells us our symbol is a less than. And at positive 6, there is also an open circle, so that tells us our symbol is also a less than. Remember, when we're writing it in this notation, we always use less than symbols. Sometimes we use less than or equal to. And this just means that our x is between negative 6 and 6, or our graph is between negative 6 and 6, which is true. Our graph is in between these two lines. So when I look for my range, my range is my y's. Remember, it goes from bottom to top. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for the bottom of the graph, which is here. And I'm looking for the top of the graph, which is here. And those values are at negative 5 and positive 4. So my range is going to go from negative 5 to 4. And at each of those blue lines, there is an open circle. So we're going to use a less than symbol. So my range would be negative, my domain would be negative 6 is less than x, which is less than 6, which just means that our graph is between negative 6 and 6. And our range is from negative 5 is less than y, which is less than 4, which means our graph is between negative 5 and 4. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I need to find my domain, which is my x's. Remember, it goes from left to right. So I'm looking for the left side of my graph and the right side of my graph, which those values are at negative 7 and positive 7. So negative 7, positive 7. That's the left and the right side. And if we look at these circles here that are on these lines, we have a closed circle and a closed circle. So that tells us both of these symbols are going to be less than or equal to. So now I've got to find my range, which is the same process, but remember our range is our y's, and it goes from bottom to top. So I'm looking for the bottom of my graph, which is down here at negative 3. And I'm looking for the top of my graph, which is up here at 6. So my range is going to go from negative 3 to 6. 
So at negative 3 on this line right here, we have, an, we have closed circles. So we're going to put a less than or equal to there by negative 3. At the top up here at 6, we don't actually have any circles. So if we don't have a circle up there, we know that's the top of the graph. Remember, we put a less than or equal to symbol there. The only time we use the less than symbol is if we see the open circle. So I need to find my domain and my range of this graph. So my domain, remember, is my x's, which go from left to right. So I'm looking for the left side of my graph, which is here, through negative 6, and the right side of my graph, which is here, through positive 7. So we have negative 6 and 7. So my domain is going to go from negative 6 to 7. At negative 6, I have an open circle, so it's just a less than symbol. At positive 7, I have a closed circle, so it's going to be a less than or equal to. So when I start looking for my range, where my range goes from bottom to top. Well, if I look for the bottom of this graph, it is here. Let's try that line again. It's here. If I look for the top of the graph, guess what? It's also there. So in this case, this notation is not going to work because I don't have a bottom and a top. I only have one line, and that line is at 2, so the range is going to be y equals 2 for this graph. That means that all of the y values at all of these points along this line are 2. And lastly, I have my domain and range again for this graph. So my domain are my x's, which goes from left to right. So if I look at the left side of my graph, you should notice something weird. There's an arrow here. That's a little bit different. So we're gonna, we can't put anything there because this arrow tells us this graph actually keeps going forever and ever and ever. It doesn't stop. So we can't put a line there saying that our graph stops because it doesn't. But if I look at the right side, I have a graph, I have a point there, so I, the graph stops there, and it stops at positive 6. So I only have a right side, so that means for my final answer, I'm going to ignore the first half of this inequality. So at 6, there is a less than or equal to symbol, so my domain is going to be x's that are less than or equal to 6. That means my entire graph is to the left of this line that we just drew, which is true. My entire graph, the blue line, is not to the left of this red line that we just drew. So when I find my range, I'm going from the bottom to the top, and remember my, and remember my range is my y's. So I'm looking for the bottom of my graph, which is going to be down here, and this is at negative 7. So my range is going to start at negative 7, but when I go to the top, notice the top doesn't have a stopping point. It keeps going. So I can't draw a line up here to stop the graph because it doesn't stop. So this time I'm ignoring this right side of my inequality. I'm only focusing on the left side. So my symbol here at this blue line at my negative 7, notice there's a closed circle there, so it's going to be a less than or equal to. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this so that it looks a little bit better. So remember we figured out our domain was just our x's that are less than or equal to 6. So our range, we said, was negative 7 is less than or equal to y. And that answer is not wrong, but it's not the most correct answer. The most correct answer is going to have y in the front and negative 7 on the right side. But we need to think back to look and look at our inequality symbol to figure out what's going to go here. So notice I switched my y and my negative 7, so this sign cannot stay the same. It's actually going to become a greater than or equal to. It might make a little more sense to think of it like this, that when you look at this inequality sign, the alligator is eating the y, and so when we switch the y to the other side, the alligator still needs to continue to eat that y, so it needs to open the other direction.